Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be sewing. In my latest video, it was the recap of all of my 2019 makes and you know, the happy new year video. I asked you all to let me know in the comments some things that you wanted to see on the channel. A lot of you said you wanted to see jackets and coats and pants and fittings and those were some awesome suggestions. So I figured why not start off the first sew along in 2020 with a jacket sew along. So we are gonna be sewing along to Simplicity 8955 and I'm gonna be sewing view A from this pattern. A few things that I do want to point out about this pattern is one, it is unlined. It also has a raglan sleeve. This pattern is also in misses and women's sizes and it just has some really great different variations on it. So you don't have to follow along with view A if you don't want to. You can you know, make any view that you want. I did make view A, but I did go with um, view B and C sleeve. So I did not make a preview video for this pattern. So really quickly, I'm gonna go over some of the details on the back, like the suggested fabrics that the pattern suggests. So you could use a brocade, a pinwheel corduroy, a crepe lightweight denim, linen tights, linen types, a lightweight twill, velveteen. For me, I used a wool type, which is also a suggestion, lightweight wool types, and also a ponte. So you have a lot of different options for um, fabric for this jacket. Uh, the notions that you will need, of course, your coordinating thread. And depending on the view that you make, if you go with view A, you're gonna need two seven eighth of an inch buttons for view B and C one large snap and for view C you're also going to need one one inch button so just make sure that you gather up all of your notions you will also need some interfacing now for size I cut the size 16 which gives me a 45 and a half uh, for the finished bust so just double check to make sure that you are cutting the right size for your measurements um, and I think that covers like all the main details of it now there are some things that I did to my jacket that was not mentioned in the instructions and I want to go over those really quickly before we start. So this right here is my jacket. Like I mentioned, I used a lightweight wool type. This fabric is from the fabric store online. I'll be sure to link it in the description box if I can still find it. I've had it for a couple months, so I may or may not be able to find it, but I'll do my best. So this fabric is lightweight and it has a little bit of stretch in it. It is a wool blend. Um, because it did have stretch in it, I was concerned about making sure and mindful that I was stabilizing the jacket as many places as I could. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off uh, my mannequin here and show it to you. So a few things that I did to stabilize the jacket was I added interfacing along all of the hems. So the front, the back hem, as well as the sleeve hem, I added a piece of interfacing just to give it some stability and you can see how nice and crisp the hems are. Um, I think the interfacing played a big role in that and it also helps the jacket to hang a little bit better. Um, along the shoulder seams, because like I mentioned, um, it has some stretch and I want to stabilize as much as I could. I did add a small strip of interfacing under here, just right on the seam. So once it's pressed flat, you won't be able to see it because it's all up under the seam allowance. Inside the jacket, all of the seams are finished with the Hong Kong finish. I purchased this fabric from my local Joann's and then I cut it into bias strips and just finished off my seams um, with the Hong Kong finish and I will show you all exactly what I did right after this. Um, and I also wanted to stabilize the back of the jacket, but because this is unlined, I didn't want you know, to see the stable, you know, what I'm using to stabilize it. So I cut a small piece of the lining fabric and placed it right up on the facing of the back. And that helped to stabilize the upper portion of the back. So there's no more stretching um, in the fabric up here. However, you can see there's still a little bit of, a little bit of stretch down here, but nothing up here toward the uppermost portion of the back. So those are just a few things that I did to stabilize this jacket. Oh, I did a catch stitch. So instead of sewing the hems in place with my sewing machine, I did them all by hand doing a catch stitch. So I just wanted to just give you a closer inside look of the jacket. So now you go ahead and cut out all of your pieces, transfer all of your markings, and let's start sewing. To make the bias tape that I made, I like to start off with the square. Before we do that though, I do want to mention that if you're new to sewing, that your fabric has grain lines. So the straight grain of your fabric runs parallel to the salvage edge of your fabric. And the salvage edge is the finished edge. Sometimes it has the label of the designer. Um, I know Joanne, sometimes they have their name printed on the salvage edge of their fabric. So your straight grain runs parallel 
to the salvage. You also have a cross grain and that runs perpendicular to the salvage. So if you have like a border print, sometimes your pattern will have you cut it on the cross grain so that you will get that print along the hem um, of the garment that you're making. So that's the cross grain. So to find your bias, your bias is at a 45 degree angle to your straight grain. Now sometimes your fabric won't have any stretch in it. So this has just a little here um, and not much there, but on your bias, it always has more stretch there. Um, and it's important not to stretch that out. So when you cut out garments like a circle skirt, you want to let those garments hang so that the bias and everything can settle overnight. Um, so it's really important when you're cutting on the bias to be careful with it, not to stretch it out. Now for me, when I'm cutting out bias, I like to start with the square. You can start as small or as big as you want. That all depends on you. But once you have located where your straight grain, your cross grain is and you're ready to start cutting the bias I like to just fold my square into like a little triangle here you can press this out if you want and then once I have that pressed I just open it out grab a ruler and I just begin cutting strips of how wide I want it so I'm just gonna start here I cut straight down and then I can line this up with a grid line and then I can just start cutting one inch strips of bias. So here's the bias tape and you can see it has that nice stretch to it and that's what we want. Now there are a lot of other ways to find um, your bias and how to cut out bias strips. You can keep them single, you can cut one in a continuous um, long tape if you like. The choice is yours or you can just connect these as you cut them. So there are lots of different ways and definitely check out the description box or you can also use some store-bought bias tape. That's a great option as well. So now that we have the bias tape cut, let's go ahead and put it onto our seams. To finish off your seams using the Hong Kong finish, after you have sewn them together, you want to press your seam flat. And so now I'm going to grab a strip of the bias tape and I'm gonna put the bias tape so that it is right side to the seam, like so. And I'm just gonna pin it to one of the sides. I'm gonna cut a little bit of this excess off. Okay, now that I have it pinned, I'm going to go to the machine. I'm just going to sew with the seam allowance in the bias tape at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have it sewn, you want to go ahead and give it a good press so that your bias tape is facing right side up. All right, now that you have given your bias tape a press, go back to the ironing board and you want to press it and fold the edge of the bias tape over so that it's going behind the seam allowance. So again, you've already pressed it like this, so go back and just press it right over the seam. All right, once you have pressed it, now you wanna grab some pins and you want to pin it in place. So I'm just gonna grab my pins and I'm gonna pin it so that it is right along the seam so that I will be able to do a stitch in the ditch. So you can see I'm pinning right here along that seam. Making sure that I catch the underside of the bias tape. Now we can go to the machine and we can stitch right in the ditch of the seam. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now I've just done a Hong Kong finish and I have stitched right here along the seam. On the underside, you can see the stitch and if you need to, you can grab your trimmers and just trim off a little bit of the excess and just give it a really good press and you have a really beautiful finish for your seams. To begin sewing our jacket, and again, I'm following along with view A on this pattern, the first thing that we're going to do is to begin stitching up here along the neck edge at a 5 8 of an inch, and then we're gonna stitch all the way down here along our dart legs, and then back up the other dart leg. So again, you're gonna start up here at the top at a 5 8 of an inch and stitch all the way down, and then stitch along the dart legs and up the other dart leg. Once you have that stitch done, you can stay at your sewing machine and you can do a row of stay stitching from up here at the center back all the way down to the notches that you should have transferred. So you're just gonna do a row of stay stitching here and stay stitching for this pattern is done at a half an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do all of those stitches now. 
Once you have your stitching done, you can see I've stitched along my dart here and I've also done my stay stitching. So once you've done these steps, we can go ahead and put our fronts to the side and start to work on our pocket. All right, here's my pattern piece number two, the pocket. And the first thing that we're going to do is press under a quarter of an inch along the upper edge of the pocket. So go ahead and grab your iron and let's go ahead and press this down. All right, once you have the quarter of an inch pressed under, now you're gonna turn it onto the outside, which would be the right side of your pocket. And you should have transferred where your fold line is. I put some snips into mine to indicate the fold line. So now we're just gonna fold it over right along that. And I'm gonna put some pins to hold it in place. Now we can go to the sewing machine and we can stitch right along our stitching line all the way along the pocket. So the sides and the lower edge, we're going to stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that now. And then we're going to go back and put some ease stitching right here along the corner. So we'll be able to ease in the curve of our pocket. So let's go ahead and do those stitches now for both of our pockets. All right, now that we have stitched along our pocket on the seam line of 5 8 of an inch, and then you've done a row of E stitching right here at a quarter of an inch, now we can go ahead and trim the seam allowance along this facing area here. All right, now we can go ahead and flip it and turn it right side out and give everything a really good press. For around this curve, we can pull on the E stitching so that we can get the shape for the curve. We can press right along that 5 8 of an inch stitch that we made. All right, so I have pressed the pocket all the way around and right here in the corners of the pocket, I've trimmed out some of the bulk of the fabric. So you can see that right here. So make sure that you trim out yours so it's not so bulky in your corners. And next, we're just gonna go to the machine and we're gonna stitch right along the top of the facing. So let's head to the machine now and go ahead and stitch, making sure that we catch right here along the fold of the facing of this pocket. Let's go ahead and do that now. Next, we're going to go ahead and sew on our pocket to the front piece. So go ahead and grab your front pattern piece. You should have transferred two large circles all in your pattern. That's for your pocket placement. So go ahead and line that up and then pin your pocket in place. Once you have your pocket pinned in place, we can go to the sewing machine and we can stitch right along the edge of the pocket, along the side and the lower edge. I've already done this pocket right here. So now let's go to the machine and stitch this one in place now. All right, so I just stitched on my pocket and one thing that I did to the other one is I went back in here and I trimmed off all of this excess along the curve because I felt like it's just still a lot of fabric down in here. You can see it puckering through. So I just flipped this out 
and I just trimmed the excess out of the pocket. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm just going to pull it out and just take off all of this excess fabric from out of the corners and then give it a good press. Okay, now I'm just going to flip it right back out and now I'm going to press it. All right, now that we have our pockets sewn on, we can move on to the next step. The next step is to go ahead and grab your back pattern piece and we're going to stitch our center back seam together. So go ahead and grab some pins, line up your notches. You should have three for the back. So match up the notches, pin there, and then pin the remainder center back seam together. All right, once you have your center back seam pinned, let's go ahead and stitch it at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have the center back seam sewn, now we can go ahead and press our seam open. The next step is to go to the machine and do a 5 eighth of an inch stitch along this neck edge of the back. But before I stitch this down, I want to go ahead and finish off my seams. For this project, because this jacket is unlined, I'm going to be finishing off my seams with some bias tape using the Hong Kong finish. So I'm going to do my seams first and then I will stitch this at a 5 eighth of an inch stitch. The next step is also to go ahead and stitch our front to back along the side seams. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then press those seams open so then I can just finish all these seams at once and then go ahead and do that neck edge stitch. So grab your front pattern pieces. If you're going to finish yours with the serger, you can go ahead and serge your seams now and go ahead and stitch. So with right sides facing. Go ahead and line up your side seams, line up your notch and pin in place. All right, now that I have my side seams pinned, I'm going to go ahead and stitch it at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now to finish off my seams and do a Hong Kong finish, I'm going to be using this fabric right here as my bias tape. I found this fabric at my local Joann's. So from this fabric, I've cut up a bunch of one inch strips of bias tape. All right, so I have finished off my center back seams as well as my side seams using the Hong Kong finish. And then I went back up to the top and I stitched at a 5 eighth of an inch along the neck edge of the back pattern piece. Before we move on to the next step, I do want to mention that my fabric is really lightweight. It's like a wool blend, suiting, weight type fabric. I don't know the exact contents of it, but it is lightweight and it does have some stretch in it. I'm concerned um, because I think over time, you know, this will begin to wear out and I really want to stabilize this as best as I can. Um, if we were lining it, then I could just put some muslin here to stabilize it. But since we're not lining it, um, I've cut this little bit of the fabric that I'm using of the bias tape and I'm thinking I'm just going to base this across here base it across here and base it across here um, just to add a little bit of stability to the back. I originally wanted it to be a little bit longer to about here, but this jacket also has a facing and I did not want a long piece of this fabric just down here and then the facing up here stopping. So that is why I just cut this small piece here. I just trimmed off the edge with uh, my picking shears. I may go back and do a narrow hem on it. But I, like I said, I just want it to be under the facing and still provide some sort of stability to the back. So while this is here, my back won't stretch as much as it is when it's not there. All right, y'all. So I just basted this on and there's no more stretching up here. So I'm really happy about that. Now let's move on and start working on our sleeves. 
For your sleeves, you wanna go ahead and put your front and back sleeve right sides facing, so pattern piece number four and pattern piece number five. Put it together right sides facing, match up your notches, and you are going to stitch your underarm seam as well as the shoulder seam of your sleeve. Now, if you are doing sleeve A, you should have transferred two large dots toward the lower portion of your sleeve. You wanna make sure when you're stitching down that you stop at the large circle, back stitch, leave that opening, and then begin stitching at the other large circle and then finish on to the hem of the sleeve. I am gonna be sewing sleeves the view for C and D, so I'm not gonna be stopping uh, at the large circles, I'm just gonna be stitching straight down. But again, make sure that you stop at your circles if you are going with view A for that little V cut out detail on your sleeve. So go ahead and pin your sleeve pieces right sides facing and stitch them in place. <laughs> So I've just sewn my underarm seam of my sleeve and before I sew the shoulder seam I wanted to show you all that we have a three inch fold line down here on the bottom of our sleeve. I've gone ahead and pressed that up just so you can see but I am not going to do the Hong Kong finish with the bias tape all the way down in here. I feel like that's going to be really bulky with all that extra fabric on the seams. So I'm just gonna take my Hong Kong finish just down inside of here. So I'm just gonna take it down and just snip the seam allowance here to finish off the seam. So I just wanted to mention that before we continued on. Once you have your sleeve seams sewn, so I've sewn my underarm seam, I've sewn the shoulder seam of my sleeve, and I've also finished it off with bias tape. I also finished off the edge of the hem of the sleeve with bias tape as well. Now that our next step is to go ahead and stitch the hem in place. I am gonna do a slip stitch, but if you are not, you can go ahead and just machine stitch across your hem. But I'm gonna save my step to the end so that I can just take my time and slip stitches in place. Um, but again, if you're not gonna be slip stitching, you can go ahead and stitch your hem in place now. Once you have your hem stitched, now we can go ahead and move on to the next step and attach our sleeve to our jacket. Go ahead and grab your sleeve and find your notches. Make sure that the double notch matches up to the double notch on your back and the single notch matches up to the front. And with right sides facing, you go ahead and pin it in place. First, I'm going to line up my side seam to the underarm seam of my sleeve. Make sure that is even and begin pinning in place. Once you get around to the front, you should have transferred a small dot. We're going to stop stitching there. Once you have your sleeve pinned in, we're gonna begin stitching from the upper back. Make sure that you back stitch at the beginning of your stitch and stitch all the way around. And you should have transferred a large circle. We're gonna stop stitching there. So don't bring it all the way up here to the top. Stop stitching at the small dot that you transferred. So again, start at the upper back all the way around your sleeve. And then once you stitch at a 5 eighth of an inch, we're gonna stitch again at 1 eighth of an inch within the seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do our stitching now. Now that we have our sleeves sewn in, you want to trim your seam, and then you also want to trim close to the second stitching that you did between these notches. So here's my double notch, here's my single notch. I'm gonna trim close to the second stitching that we did. Once I have it all trimmed, I'm gonna finish off my seam with some bias tape. All right, I've gone ahead and finished off my armhole seam. The next step is to take the center back. So you should have this extension right here on your front piece. We're gonna put these pieces right sides facing and stitch right down the center. So go ahead and line up your notches, grab your pins and pin in place. Now let's go to the machine and stitch this at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. After you have your seam sewn, go ahead and press it open.
The next step is right here along our back. We're going to just make some clips into the back to the stitching. Don't go past your stitching line. So you want to grab your scissors and just make a couple clips right here on the back only. You don't need to bring it over to the shoulder or the front. Just stay right here along the back and just put a couple clips into it. The next step is to stitch the back neck edge here as well as the dart on the front. So to do this, first I'm going to match up my center back seams here and pin those in place. You should have transferred a small dot. I have mine here. It's probably hard for you to see, but there's my small dot that lines up to your shoulder seam. So just match that up and pin in place. And then you want to pin out your dart just like you normally would. So just bring the, the lines together, the dart, and we sh you should have stitched those already. So just bring those together and put your pins through and pin it in place. Now just continue pinning the remainder of the back edge together. All right, so now that we have it pinned, we're gonna begin stitching here in the center and stitch to one end of the point of the dart. Then we're gonna come back to the center and stitch to the other point of the dart. Being sure when you get to the point that you tie a knot off, do not back stitch. Just back stitch at the beginning of your stitch here in the center and then stitch to the other side. So let's go ahead and stitch our back neck edge now. <laughs> All right, once you have your back neck edge sewn together and you've sewn out to the point of your darts, trim your back neck edge seam allowance and then we're also going to slash into the darts. So just grab some scissors and just slash down as far as you can go with your dart. Okay, so go ahead and slash into your other dart and then trim your back neck edge seam. All right, once you have slashed into your darts and you've trimmed down your back neck seam, we can go ahead and put the jacket to the side and start working on the facing. To begin working on our facings, we're gonna start with our front facing here, and you wanna go ahead and apply your interface into that. So I've applied my interface into both pieces, and I've also transferred my stitching lines onto it as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is stitch the center back seam. So you should have transferred some notches. Go ahead and pin in place. And now we're going to stitch at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that you have the center seam sewn together, you want to go ahead and press your seam open flat. And you should have transferred some stitching lines right here in the corners. And let's go ahead and stitch right along the stitching lines that you transferred. Once you have stitched along your stitching line while you're still at the machine, you wanna go ahead and do some ease stitching along the outer edge. So we have two notches here and two notches here. You're gonna do two rows of ease stitching from notch to notch. So let's go ahead and first Stitch along the stitching line and then do your two rows of e-stitching along the outer edge. Now that you have reinforced this inner corner and done your two rows of e-stitching along the outer edge, now we can go ahead and clip to the corners. So grab some scissors and just clip right to the corner. Do not clip through your stitching. All 
All right, next we can go ahead and finish this unnotched edge along the front facing. So go ahead and finish yours the same way you've been finishing the other seams in your jacket. I am gonna wait to finish off my seam after I attach the back facing. That way I can do my bias strip along the edge of all of it at one time. But if you're not doing yours that way, you can go ahead and finish the unnotched edge of your front facing now, and then we can move on to the next step. Next, you wanna go ahead and grab your back facing and you should have transferred your stitching lines as well. So now we're gonna to go to the machine. We're just gonna stitch right along our stitching lines. And while you're still there, you wanna go ahead and stitch the neck edge at a 5 8 of an inch stitch. So first, go ahead and stitch along your stitching line and then stitch the neck edge at a 5 8 of an inch stitch. So let's go ahead and do all our stitching now. All right, now that you have stitched along your stitching line as well as your neck edge, you can go ahead and grab your scissors and you can make a few clips right along the curves, but do not go past your stitching. Once you've made the clips, you can go ahead and finish off the outer edge of your back facing. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and do mine once I sew it and attach it to the front facing. So go ahead and grab your front facing pieces now. And with right sides facing, we are going to pin the back facing to the front. You wanna go ahead and grab your back. You should have transferred two notches, match those up to the front and pin in place. You should have a notch up here for the shoulder that's gonna match up to this one on the front. So line those up and pin in place. The corners from your stitching line, those dots, you want to match those up and pin in place there as well. So make sure it's going through the dots. And just continue pinning your facing in place. All right, once you have your back facing pinned to the front, we can go to the machine. We can begin stitching here. Make sure that you back stitch, stitch to this dot, and when you get here, you want to pivot and go around the neck edge. Once you get to this one, pivot again and come to the end and back stitch here. So let's go ahead and do our stitching now. Once you have the facings sewn, you want to flip it onto the right side and make sure that you have a nice smooth seam. I just need to give mine a really good press, but you don't want to see any folds or puckles. You want everything to be nice and smooth. So once you have that done, now you can trim the back neck edge and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I've gone ahead and finished off the edge of my front and back facing with my bias tape that I've been using for the jacket. So now with right sides facing, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it to the jacket. And I'm just gonna begin pinning all the way down the front as well as the lower edge of the facing of the jacket. All right, now that we have it all pinned, we can go to the machine and baste this in place. And if you need to, you can pull up on your gathering stitches and baste that in place. Once you have it basted and everything is fitting, then we're just gonna stitch all the way around. If you are doing view A, you wanna make sure that you're stitching on that stitching line to create the lapel. But if not, you can just continue stitching all the way down. So let's go to the machine now and go ahead and do our stitching. We're gonna stitch all the way down, also along the lower edge as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna begin stitching in the center and work my way to one side and then come back to the center and stitch down the other side. Once we have it sewn, we can go ahead and clip into our corners, trim our seam, and if you stitched out along the stitching line, you can trim and clip that out as well. So go ahead and do your trimming now. All right, now that we've done our trimming, the next step before we flip everything to the right side is to do some understitching. So take a quick look at your diagram just so you can see where you're gonna be understitching at. 
So from two inches below the notches, we're going to be stitching along the facing. However, along the remainder of the seam, we're going to be stitching along the jacket. So you want to make sure that you look at your diagram to see where you're going to be stitching. And we're doing it that way because with the lapel, this is going to fold backwards so you want your under stitching to be back here but along the front at the bottom this is going to fold toward the inside and you want your under stitching to be on the inside so again take a quick look at step 27 to see your under stitching stitching and let's go ahead and do those stitches now all right so i've turned everything to the inside and i've given it a good press so you can see here that this under stitching is on the jacket so when you fold back the collar you can't see it however down here the under stitching is on the inside so when you wear your jacket and it's folding to the inside the under stitching will be under here so i just wanted to show you that to make sure that you have your under stitching in the right place if you can see under stitching up here on the right side of the collar you did it the wrong way it should be underneath the next step is to work on our hem. Now for our hem, I'm going to do my last because I'm going to do it the same exact way I plan to do for my sleeve, which is to finish off the lower edge with the same bias tape and then press it up and I'm going to slip stitch it in place. So that's what I'm going to do for my hem. If you're not going to do that, you can go ahead and finish off the raw edge of your hem now, press it up and you can stitch it in place. Once you have your hem complete, the next step is to stitch together the next seams. Okay, so to stitch our next seams, we're going to turn our back facing out of the way. We're going to get our two neck seams here. So you can go ahead and match those up, pin them in place. Okay, once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch just the neck seam. There's no need to continue the stitch all the way down here. We're just stitching the neck seam and we're going to stitch it at an eighth of an inch attaching just the seam allowances together. So just stitch right in your seam allowance at an eighth of an inch only here at your neck seam. All right, once you have the neck edges stitched together, next you want to go ahead and tack down the facing to the shoulder seam. So just grab a needle and thread and just make a couple tacks. Make sure that you don't go through because you don't want to see the tacks on the right side of the garment. So just stitch right here with the seam allowance and just do one or two, two or three tacks right here at your shoulder seams. And once you have those tacked down, the last thing to do is to go ahead and Mark out your buttonhole, make it, and then sew on your button, and you're all done with your jacket. Well, that is all for this sew along. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down for me below. And also share your pics with me. I would love to see your finished jackets. And follow me over on social at Brittany J. Jones. I'll see you all in the next video. Blessings, everyone. Bye.